Running a business can be quite a challenge for anyone. For someone to pick up their bags and start a business in a foreign country is an entirely different challenge. Meet the ambitious expats who chose the city of Breda as the place to kickstart their business. Welcome to Foreign Affairs. On the outskirts of Breda, in the village of Barvel, a Scottish lady runs a daycare called the Breda Bumblebees. Angela was born in Dunfermline, Scotland, and first came to the Netherlands 19 years ago. After I finished school in Fife, I went up to Aberdeen, to the College of Commerce. Um, I was quite young at the age, I think I was 17, and I studied languages. I studied French, German, Spanish and Italian, and I majored in French and Spanish. And when I finished, it was with the sole purpose of becoming a translator. Unfortunately, it was exactly the time there was an oil slump and I couldn't get a job. Um, so I ended up working in a bar, as you do when you're Scottish. She was approached by a family-run fishing company and spent 10 years helping them to grow nationally and internationally. I was working in the salmon industry and I met my ex who was in logistics, transport and warehousing. Through him we moved to England and then he got a contract to set up a new distribution centre here in Moordyke and that's what brought us to Breda. Angela and her family initially visited Rotterdam but city life was not for her, so they decided to settle in Breda instead. And at that time, he was renting a place in Breda, and I fell in love with Breda. I'm like, okay, this is it. This is where we're gonna come. We'll come to Breda. Sounds simple, right? An hour away by plane. It was not simple. Coming to Breda with a young family and not knowing anyone, including the language, even although I'm a linguist, was probably one of the most stressful things I've done in my life. It was really, really lonely. As a career person, being alone at home with the children while they integrated proved really difficult for her. So I was kind of lost and I was thinking about things that I could do. I'd helped out another fish company from Scotland from home in, in, in Breda. And uh, then via via, a French lady found me and she was doing a nine month project for um, the government in Paris and she needed someone to look after her little girl Anouk and Anouk uh, was nine months old I think no ten months old at the time but the deal was that person had to speak French to her because they were inevitably going back to France. She took the opportunity since she had to stay at home with her own children anyway. It was fascinating it was totally fascinating because then her mother said if you want to try out English with her you can and she was an adorable child, absolutely adorable and very intelligent. And I suddenly realised, wow, this is mesmerising that I can teach another someone else's child a language. Once the local baker and some other local small businesses learned about what she was doing, word spread throughout the community and more opportunities came her way. That was 11 years ago, actually, this month. In fact, it was 11 years ago this month. Um, and through word of mouth, I got children whose parents were here on six month uh, secondments. I had Spanish children, I had Hungarian, Russian. I've had every nationality under the sun. And with the main aim of me looking after them, but also trying to connect either in their language or to try to teach them some English or Dutch or Spanish or French or whichever language they needed to be taught. Angela's language skills were useful once again as she continued to grow the daycare. So that was in the days that you could do that without qualifications. And then of course the government decided, and quite rightly so, that they wanted uh, their childminders to be registered. That involved me taking an exam. So for someone with a degree that should be easy, right? Unfortunately, I didn't write any Dutch at the time and all my certifications were in English. In order for the government to evaluate her experience, she had to go through a lengthy process with the EVC. And I basically had to get documentation together from everywhere. I think it ended up being 210 pages long. It was ridiculous. Um, and that all had to be approved. Once that was approved, then they agreed for me to be certified as a childminder. With that certification then, I was allowed to look after 
up to five children and also um, extra children over a certain age and that's all changed through the years as well. Before getting her certification she even ran a lunch club for children with difficulties. I had twins that had their own language and didn't want to speak anyone else's language or to anyone else which was interesting. I had a little boy that was like the rain man um, and he was adorable but he was a counter. He didn't like anything to be out of place. I had uh, another girl who'd had trauma in her life and couldn't deal with it. So I ended up with the help of a friend of mine. She worked with me. We ran this lunch club. That all stopped. Then I went back into um, just with the children that I was looking after. As Angela moved around Breda and Barvel, she brought the bumblebees with her. It was crucial that she always had a dedicated space for the kids. The really main important thing was that I had a separate building because this is their space and they should be allowed to have the freedom of their own space. And when you're a childminder and you have children in your own home, whether you like it or not, you don't give them that freedom. And to get a best out of a child, they really absolutely need to feel that this is my space and, you know, I can do this. But they have to keep it clean. At the end of the day, they have to keep it clean. And when I say, OK, it's all around the time or we're going to clean up, you know, guys, going to clean up everything goes away where it's supposed to go and um, so this space was very very important to me she even took the layout of the space into careful consideration in order to optimize learning so i decided to put all my toys up high two reasons first of all when they want to play with something they have to bring it down and they have to play as a team so i'm encouraging team play working with different nationalities obviously as they are but also the fact that I'm speaking languages every second, a different language, it means that when they're only having one thing to play with from up high instead of loads of things on the floor, it means that they're listening to what I'm saying in all these different languages. They absorb more because of this. Angela faced some personal difficulties while trying to integrate into the Netherlands. Being a linguist, I know how important it is um, to learn the language of the country that you're living in. That's really important. You cannot integrate properly unless you do that. And I was very aware of that, so I found it very frustrating. So I really tried my hardest to, I didn't join the International Women's Club for the first two years so that I only had Dutch friends. I asked everyone at school to speak to me in Dutch, etc., etc. And finally, after a while, longer than I imagined actually, um, I picked up the Dutch language enough to be able to converse that I was happy enough with, not written, but picked it up. On top of the language, some cultural differences also proved troublesome. I am Scottish, and Scottish people don't really have any agendas. We just like, oh, whatever, we'll just do it whenever. Let's do this, let's just do that. There's not, we're not really a, a nation of agendas. We like to think we are, but we're definitely not. And the Dutch people are a nation of agendas. So everything is, as they say in Dutch, op asperg, which basically means has to be written down. So if you want to have a cup of tea with someone, you have to make an appointment. If you want to have a barbecue, you have to make an appointment. Now I can, even now, I can't get my head around that. How do you know what the weather's going to be like? So how can you make an appointment six weeks from now for a barbecue? Why can't you just phone in the morning and say, let's have a barbecue? But no, it's so structured here that I, I really struggled with that structure. Her business ideas face some initial pushback as well. Because I always felt like I, I was out of the box, that I was doing something that they didn't like, like speaking different languages. I was told you're only allowed to speak another language for a maximum of one hour at any one specific time in the day because otherwise it causes problems with a child's mind. Well, I've never seen that. During one assessment, she was given very unexpected criticism. And I was told, for a childminder, I'm too interactive. Now, that just bowled me over, because I just thought to myself, that's the point. With children, you should be interactive. This is how children grow. This is how they flourish by being interactive. So I really most of the time, and in the beginning actually, felt like a square peg in a round hole. Angela's longtime friend and customer, Anna, shed some light on what it was like to make use of Angela's services. Yeah, we stayed 
a very long time with Angela until our youngest son was four and had to go to school. And we moved all the way with Angela. And that was quite some times and um, convenient for us because my husband had to work in Eindhoven at the time that Angela moved to Bavel so he could drop off the kids and go to work. While language wasn't a priority for Anna and her three children, it ended up being quite helpful. I had just the idea my, my children are Dutch, my husband is Dutch, we're not uh, really into going abroad or uh, for, for work or for a longer period. Um, but actually it worked out really well because um, my kids really needed something extra. We, came along, uh, we, um, we found out along the way and um, because of the English, they were never bored here. Angela will soon put the braid of bumblebees behind her and look ahead to an exciting new career. What made the bumblebees really, really nice is that it was a house, like, that it was a real... Uh, Angela really took care of them as, uh, yeah, as if they were her own. It was, and I got a lot of tips and tricks as uh, a young mum. She spent some time looking at career options working for other people before being approached by the owner of a brand new business through LinkedIn. All good things come to an end. And in this instance, I am going to shut the bumblebees down. Uh, my last day uh, doing this job will be the 28th of February of this year. The reason being, there was a natural progression of the children that I have going off to school. It made me think, I have a second chance of life here. This company is called Stockspot, and it operates by quickly connecting shippers in need of warehousing with providers of temporary space. And he approached me with the idea of helping their company from a sales perspective. And I went along to meet with them and yeah, there was a click. And I just decided, okay, this is it. This is a great challenge for me. Um, they, they have a very, uh, quite a unique concept. It's very, it's unique to the Netherlands. It's on-demand warehousing, so basically they are the Airbnb of the warehousing world. Fantastic concept that not a lot of people know about, so my job is going to make sure they do know about it and to um, help them grow, not just here in the Netherlands, in the Benelux, in fact, throughout the whole of Europe. And the exciting thing for me is I get to keep speaking my languages. No matter what career Angela moves on to in the future, the memories and experiences with all the children of the Breda Bumblebees will stick with her.